What's up, guys? My name is Stephanie, and I'm your host on Stop Driving Cruise Control and Take Control. Today's episode is going to be a little different from the last few episodes. Today's an actual live episode, so you're going to hear some bloopers, some mess ups, and just hear me rambling sometimes. But today I want to go deeper on manic depression, which is also known as the bipolar. And we're going to talk about the experiences. And we're doing a live interview with a good friend of mine who's experienced everything and who's got the help. We're going to talk about how she got into it, what she did to help herself. Um, But I just want to give you guys a reminder that manic depression is just like major depression. And they experience things like despondency, the difficulty sleeping or sleeping too much, the lack of energy, the fatigue, loss of appetite or overeating. Unexplained aches and pains, loss of ap- of interest in pleasurable things, lack of concentration, memory problems, inability to make decisions, feeling worthless or hopeless, worry, anxiety, death or self-harm thoughts. But when the manic part comes in, they start experiencing high energy, reduced sleep, ir- irritability. I can't even pronounce that. Why can't I pronounce that? Irritability. There we go. <laughs> Racing thoughts and speech. Uh, imposing in style, increase in self-esteem and confidence, unusual or risky and self-destructive behaviors, feeling high or eu- euphoric, intense excitement and happiness. And with these conditions, some episodes can cause people to hallucinate and de- be delusional. Mania is like a mix with its own symptoms, which is added on top of depression, which can make shit even harder. So today we're doing a live interview, like I said. Um, Selena, if you want, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell the people a little about yourself. Okay. Hi, guys. I'm Selena. Um, I have suffered from manic depression in the past, and I have actually overcome that. Thank God. Um, I am 27 years old. Um, I am from Connecticut, up north. Um, I have a couple dogs, no kids, and... (laughs) (laughs) Yes, no kids. And um, I'm ready to talk to you guys about my experience. And hopefully, you know, with hearing my experience, it can help you guys to understand what manic depression is and, you know, how to to deal with it and what I did to deal with, you know, my my depression, especially when I was going through manic depression, which was no fun. I can definitely say that. Um, Yeah. So I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this today. I'm excited to hear about it, to be honest with you. I mean, I've been friends with you for, what, about a year now? Uh, about two years, actually, now. So, I've experienced some of your episodes, and I honestly... This episode is called Comedy and Tragedy. And mm-hmm. the reason for that is because when you got into your episodes, when you were hyperactive, mm-hmm. it was more of comedy between, for me and the people that you were around. And... The reason why I chose comedy and tragedy is because when I looked into the results, it's the hyperactive in you Mm -hmm. was a symptom. Mm -hmm. And to us, it was just, we thought you were being you. We Mm -hmm. thought you were being funny. And the tragedy part of the title comes in because it's a tragedy that that wasn't the case. It Mm -hmm. wasn't really you or who you are. Um, Can you explain a little bit more on the the hyperness? Okay, so, well, let me first start by saying that um, when I first met Steph, um, I had just moved to Florida, so she kind of only got, you know, what she saw at that moment. So we hung out a lot, and um, this was when I was going through my manic depression, when I, you know, first moved here um, about two years ago, and I, I didn't know what was going on with me. Like, I, I had no idea what, you know, I knew that this wasn't me, but not everybody else didn't know that this wasn't me. You know, everybody just thought, okay, this is how she is. And I'm, you know, even as I'm going through it, I'm explaining to people like, this is not me. This is not me. Like, you know, I had episodes where I would, I would like to put on different color wigs and I would like to, you know, when I put these different color wigs on, I would act like completely different people. Like I had names, like, you know, my blonde hair was Heather and she would act feisty. And... <laughs> I remember when I first met Heather. <laughs> when Heather came, I came out the room and I said, hey guys, I'm Heather. And everyone just looked at me like, um, and I was being so serious. Like I'm Heather. Like that's, that's. I remember that. I actually remember when I first, I don't mean to cut you off, but I remember mm-hmm. when I first saw you with the wig on. I said, what's up, Selena? And you legit looked at me you're like, who's Selena? <laughs> Head nodding and everything, like, 
uh, excuse me, I don't know, Selena. And I was like, wait, what? Can I would you explain go to, that to me? I would go to work with the blonde hair, and I'm a server. So the people in the kitchen, when I had my blonde hair, they'd be like, Heather, your food's out. Because I would tell them, like, no, like, my name is not Selena. My name is Heather. They respected that. And, um, but I was so serious. Like, it literally, I felt like, you know, if I was going through, you know, when the sadness would start to hit because I, it would be all different. You know, some, some days, some weeks would be, you know, sadness and then other weeks would be complete happiness and then other weeks would be anger. So it is, you know, when that sadness came, I used to want to bring out Heather because, you know, Heather was secure. Like she didn't have any insecurities, you know, she was feisty. She put her foot down. She didn't let people walk all over her. And then I had Joey. Joey was the little boy. So Heather, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. Heather was like your defense mechanism yes. pretty much. Mm-hmm. So whenever you're feeling down, like with me, I had definitely suffered from major depression. Mm-hmm. So when I felt down, I just went to my room mm-hmm. and stayed in my room locked up. So I guess that, that, that part of you that was locked up, that was Selena who was yeah. locked up and you brought up a whole new personality, mm-hmm. a whole new person to, to cover up your sadness pretty much, yeah. right? And mind you, like, I'm not, this has, this wasn't part of me, like, you know, all my life. Like, this is something that just kind of just came out of nowhere. Like, and I was kind of confused about that. How old were you when you had your first uh, episode? I was, this started probably, like, when I was 24. Oh, so it's... It's recently, yeah. yeah. This, you know, when I was younger, younger, like, I had anxiety. I feel like when you hit a certain age, um, you start to go through certain things and, you know... you when it comes to to disorders like this it could come at any age Mm -hmm. you know it's not like okay you know some people literally could just pop out and and it's just like yeah it it could all have to do with certain things that you're going through in your life and how you know you deal with that and I think in in my way my best way to deal with it was to you know bring out these different personalities that I would look like a completely different person like I wouldn't even look like the same person yeah I remember that and um, then I would have my hyper, what she, you know, what Steph said earlier, I would have my hyper moments where I would, it, like, talking about it now is embarrassing because, like, mind you, I, I, I don't, like, I know now, but when I was going through it, I had no idea what was going on with me. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm out of it, I understand mm-hmm. it. And um, so I would make these weird noises, like, mm, ah, ah, just like... <laughs> Just like, like that. Wild Thornberry. Yes, much, like just boy. Mm-hmm, just randomly, and I'm like, oh, everybody look, and I'm like, oh, sorry, Joey came out. Like Joey was the 11 year old boy who, like, yeah. you know, just liked to like. I would laugh. I would, yo, I had so much. First of all, I don't know where the energy came from, but I would just have this energy that just was like nonstop. Like I would Off just the walls. Just, just talk and just laugh and just joke and just jump around, and it wasn't real happiness, you know. And the way people would look at it is like, wow, she's a really hyper person, and I'm just like, I, I'm really not. Like I don't, you know, get this. And then there would be times when I would get out of that stage, and I would be like, all right, well now I want to be in my room because I don't want to be around anybody, mm-hmm. and I would just isolate myself from everybody so it was really hard to keep friends because a lot of people didn't understand that you know how I would be like so involved and around all the time and then out of nowhere I would just disappear and people would think okay maybe I'm mad at them what in all actuality I'm just in my room not talking to anybody I don't even want to open up my phone you know so it's it it has stages and um and that's basically where the major depression comes mm -hmm. in because like I said uh, doing the research on manic depression, it's it's a mixture of both, mm-hmm. where you have manic and then you have the depression, and that's where mm-hmm. the depression part comes. Yeah, so. and it's also all about too. Well, yeah, it starts with the depression, and um, if you don't treat that, then it could further go into you know manic basically, and you know, like I said, so you know, me and Steph we actually like fell off for a little bit and I would say for a couple months and then when she came back into my life I was a completely different person huge difference <laughs> I uh, huge difference <laughs> to the point where I saw another wig on her and she was still Selena <laughs> I had to put a wig on and she's like who's this and I'm like what do you mean this is Selena like <laughs> and she's like oh okay like and it you know I was better I I was a lot better and, and what 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 procedures did you take? Like, what, what made, what, what put you to the last straw to make you be like, listen, you know what, Selena, it's time for me to get my stuff together, 
we need to change. We need to do something about this. What What was that last straw? For you? My last straw was okay. So I had insomnia, mm-hmm. anxiety, and depression. My last straw was when the sleep. I would say no sleep for about four or five months really was my Jesus. last straw. And um, I started to look, you know, look for certain, um, you know, to buy, buy certain drugs for people to help me sleep. You know, I would ask my friend, hey, can I have a Xanax? Like, I need, mm. I need to sleep. Like, yeah. and I, you know, though that's the, that was random. It wasn't like I, I was able to get them all the time. So what I did get is Xanax. I was happy. I was able to sleep. Mm-hmm. So finally you know don't that that ends up not lasting so you start the sleep started to really hit me not getting any sleep and when that started to hit me it the manic became more like i had a mental breakdown so i let it get so far Mm -hmm. without looking for help without seeking for help without even accepting that i needed help and when that breakdown came I I realized at that moment that I need to help myself. This is not this is not working for me anymore. I cannot live my life like this. Mm-hmm. I can't. And um you know, I I seek help. I seek help. So yeah, I seek help and um you know, I'll be completely honest about what I did um when I had my mental breakdown, I seeked out a uh, therapist and a psychiatrist um I started to speak to a therapist I didn't want to just do the psychiatrist because I felt like okay yeah I could go on medication but going on medication and not actually solving the problem at the same time is kind of pointless you know Mm -hmm. so I decided okay let me get on the medication so I could start talking to a therapist and I could start to you know work on my problems and that's not the only thing I did. I also, you know, so I got a, um, a very, very mild antidepressant that I take at night and um, it helps me sleep and it does help, you know, with the depression that I have. And I also um, take anxiety medication. And I, from the, I, it, it started to make me realize that the anxiety is what, to, what started to become the root of everything. Mm-hmm. The anxiety was so bad and it was the first thing I had was anxiety and yeah, when I let the sucks. it and that's sucks. like the gateway to everything it's the gate it literally started with the anxiety because I did not treat the anxiety and I continued on letting this anxiety take over my life mm-hmm. it turned into depression because now you know the anxiety was getting so bad that I, I you know now I, I'm depressed and then it turned when you have anxiety you automatically have insomnia why because when you have anxiety how could you sleep if you were Your going through anxiety, a million miles per hour. The whole night, it was my anxiety was so bad that I had scars on my stomach from how tightly I was holding my breath all day wow. long. Every all day long, all day long, I held my breath all day. It was so bad, like I couldn't do anything because the anxiety was so horrible. Like I said, that that started to become even more. So once I I was able to treat the anxiety a lot of the stuff started to fade away. So I feel like, you know, you might feel like a lot, of, like I said, a lot of these issues start off with one thing. And if you don't treat that one thing, it starts to open up other things. So, you know, that anxiety started to open up all of the, the manic depression, you know, by not treating it, by not sleeping, by sitting there having anxiety for a year straight and not doing anything about it. Anxiety like does not drug. go away. It do, yeah, it yeah. doesn't go away. Because once, you, once your body gets used to taking one drug mm-hmm. and the high doesn't do anything for your body yeah. anymore, you look for another drug exactly. with a higher substance like... And you just keep on and on. And now you're mm-hmm. deep in and you're at it. Yes. You know. Exactly. So. And that's exactly how it, it literally just kept getting worse. And all my life, I always went by, okay, well, if I just wait it out, it'll get better. Mm-hmm. It'll heal. And it's always, that's always worked for me where if I just waited it out, it got better. Not this. This is the one thing in my life that it did not get better. So once I was able to, you know, once I got to the anxiety medication and I got, you know, sleeping pills... Um, my life just got so much better. I started to, I got a job. Um, and then I started to have my, you know, my spiritual awakening Mm -hmm. and 
the spiritual awakening made me feel even better because my spiritual awakening, I was able to cleanse myself. I was able to protect myself, you know, and just understand in touch the, with your get inner in touch, heart yes. and heal that mm-hmm. from the inside out. Yes, because the anxiety, like I said, the anxiety didn't just come out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like, it comes from trauma. Yes. It, it comes ste- from trauma. Mm-hmm. It, and trauma stems from, it could be from when you were young or it could be something that was very traumatic when you were at an older age. Yes. Even though you're understanding more of life because you're older, all trauma happens and you still, you feel like a child in the mm-hmm. head because you don't know how to deal with it. And then you sweep it on the rug and just let it go until the next, until the next. Until well, the next. that's what happened to me. Um, I had a lot of trauma as a kid and I kept it all in. Mm-hmm. And then what really triggered it all to happen was um, my best friend committed suicide about a year ago. And this is, I think that was just a breaking point. Like once that happened, everything started coming back up it wasn't you know i would try to go to sleep i had recent thoughts about my childhood about the bad things that happened to me about the things that my dad did to me about you know my best friend and her death and how she's gone and all these racist thoughts and i feel like you know when you bottle everything up yeah you'll be fine but there's gonna be that one thing that's gonna hit you so hard that everything that you have bottled up explodes it all the bottle explodes so guess what all that stuff that you were holding in all comes out. And I'm telling you, instantly, everything got bad from there. And it's like, you know, even after the medication, um, the thoughts were still there. Mm-hmm. I had to d- go through a healing process as far as, you know, healing my chakras and healing, you know, accepting the things that, you know, were happened to me and accepting those things. And also by... You know, meditating. Meditating is is huge. Meditating for me helps a lot. Um, and I agree with that. I don't mm-hmm. mean to cut you off, but I definitely agree with that because if you guys remember, she said that me and her uh, we weren't friends for a while, mm-hmm. and when I came back into her life, she was a completely different person. It was like a whole one eighty, and it's because she was doing what she, exactly what she was explaining right now. She got in touch with more of her spiritual side. And started healing herself, like her soul, pretty much. And I was on the same journey of healing myself when I met her again, like when we reconnected. And because of her, she got me into meditation as well. Mm -hmm. And I've been meditating, and oh my God, when I tell you, like, being on the path of healing and meditating now on top Mm -hmm. of that, just taking 10 minutes to yourself to just relax and and try to gather your thoughts Mm -hmm. it changes your mood and your whole vibe entirely so i want to thank you for that for introducing me to that you're welcome and and opened up my eyes to that Mm -hmm. so it it literally a lot of people don't understand but by energies it doesn't matter what medication you're on you know what i mean like when i would go through being around certain people whose energy was very bad i would anxiety will come right back regardless mm-hmm. of what I was on you know I could be in the grocery store and see a, a person that has really bad energy and I would have anxiety instantly um also being around certain people certain people are not good for us in our lives and we know who those people are deep down but we try so hard to hold on to these people and we don't <laughs> understand that a lot of the mental things we go through also has to do with the people we have around yes. us we feed off of other people's energy so if somebody's energy is bad for example when I was going through what I was going through The energy that was fed off of me was not good energy. Like, people, you know, they said, okay, well, she's so hyper and and looks so happy, but her energy doesn't feel like that. Mm -hmm. So you can instantly feel that. And, um, you know, like like I said, a lot of things with people, obstacles. People are obstacles, I'm telling you. Like, it, it gets to the point where if you have certain people in your life where you're just like, I cannot be around this person. They stress me out. You know, every time you're, you know, you could be having a good day and here goes this person sucking your energy. Like, it mm-hmm. it all starts with changing the people of your life. Changing the people of your life. Removing negative people from within your life. That's that's huge. Um, I can't press the fact of meditation. Clearing your mind. When you meditate, you're not supposed to think about anything. Shut your mind off. And it's hard at first, but it's, it really pays off. Even with Steph, when I first explained medica- uh, medication, when I first <laughs> explained meditation to Steph, she's like, okay, well, am I, I'm not supposed to think about anything. And I said, <laughs> yeah. no. And that she had looked, me so confused. She looked at me like, wait, how am I supposed to shut my brain off? And I explained to her, listen, it's, it's something that you, could, could, you, know, you, you tend to be able to control your mind in due time. So start off with 
five seconds of meditation and the next time you do it do 10 seconds and the next time and it's you do so it. much easier too when you have like so if you go on youtube there's meditation guides and yes. if you start off with like you know um 10 minute meditation beginners there's somebody who's walking you through it so they'll sit there and be like okay sit down relax take deep breaths in and that hearing like instructions on how to learn how to meditate while you're meditating mm -hmm. it's really good because you don't think about what's yeah. on your mind you're you're listening yes versus letting your thoughts wander yeah. you know and then once you get to that comfortable spot where you're just like all right i think i can do this on my own and then you actually meditate with just the music mm -hmm. the soothing sounds in the background it's like it's mind-boggling yes, how your mind just stays feeling. it's like yeah it's like trying to mm -hmm. stay quiet now yeah. you know and if you're meditating outside like what i like to meditate outside um i like to you know clear my mind and i like to listen to the birds chirping i like to listen to you know the the wind the breeze the trees the the leaves i like to listen to all of that and um you know, it's all about what you focus your mind on mm -hmm. and to not focus your mind on your everyday thoughts. It's kind of like giving your mind a break from thinking because we think nonstop every day, mm -hmm. 24 hours, every second of the day, we are thinking our minds are We just got to learn to turn that switch off. Even and turn when we're sleeping, yeah. we're still exactly. thinking. It's our subconscious yes. at that point. So that's why meditation is so important because just like she just said, it's kind of shutting your brain off and giving it a second to just relax, to just chill, you know? And, and like I said, once the meditation, you could start, you know, every time you're going to do anything that has to do with healing, I would definitely meditate. And when you want to heal things, you can't just cover them up. You know, you have to bring them to the surface and understand that these things cannot be hidden anymore. So how I would explain it when everybody asked me, OK, like, what did you finally do when you had to face your problems? Mm -hmm. And I said, honestly, I got up, I turned around and instead of, I've been running from my issues for my whole life, running, 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 never want to face it, running. I finally stopped. I turned around and I walked towards my issues. I walked towards them. It felt like it was a big closet of a whole, not even a closet, a, a hoarding house of a whole bunch of junk that I had to literally for months go through and just sort it out one thing at a time and resolve the issue one thing at a time. It's all about coming to peace with something, understanding, yes, this person did this to you. It happened. It's done. Accept everything Accept and expect it. nothing. Exactly exactly and that's really what it's about like you have to really just heal one thing at a time and, and understand that it's not it's gonna take time it's gonna take time um you know i like to ask my me personally i'm very spiritual i like to ask my ancestors for help mm -hmm. um like when i had my breakdown i called upon my ancestors i said listen i you guys see what i'm going through and i need your help i cannot be like this anymore um, like literally like it's just breakdown like I cannot cry and I cannot be like this anymore um, and my ancestors you know they guided me through exactly what I need to do this was a couple months ago I would say four months ago I was going through really bad shit and now I just got a new car I just got a new apartment I opened up my own online business I got a job nine to five. Like I went from doing absolutely nothing, sitting in the house, depressed, looking at the walls, not wanting to leave, to literally just remodeling my whole life completely. And I literally got rid of all the bad. I, I got rid of all the negative people that were in my life, completely got rid of them, completely cut them off. And see, that's where, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, mm -hmm. but that hearing you say you can get rid of the negative people mm -hmm. that is such an amazing thing to do because being around that negative energy does feed more negative thoughts to yeah. you and the only thing is is when you're trying to better yourself mm -hmm. you have to accept everything and expect nothing and yes. i mean that so much because when you are getting rid of that negative people and you think about it you're in this depression because you surround yourself with everybody who's mm -hmm. negative so you're literally restarting with a friendship yeah you have nobody so you already felt lonely when you had these friends mm -hmm. so now you're gonna feel lonelier yeah you know and it's you but, have to have that strength to keep pushing through yeah. if you want that but change. you know what in order for you to heal 
Nobody else can heal you. Facts. You have to heal yourself alone. Exactly. And that is, I listen, a lot of people might not agree with that. But I will tell you from my personal experience, having people around does not help because now you're getting opinions from other people that do not understand what you're going through. And then having overthinking issues on top of the depression, it just makes you feel like, mm -hmm. oh my God, well, this person said that I shouldn't do this, but this person said I shouldn't do this. And that's what what ends up happening is everybody has their own opinion. And and then that anxiety kicks in. It's just best to just take a break from everybody. Like I said, and in order to heal other people, in order to help other people, you have to heal and help yourself mm-hmm. in order to attract people to you. Like, honestly, before, a couple months ago, like probably like six, seven months ago, nobody was attracted to me. I was damaged. I was, you know, I was damaged. I, everybody's seen it, regardless of how much I try to hide it. It was out there. Everybody's seen it. You know, now you start attracting people to you when you the are right your, people. the right people. Yeah. That's... I am so happy that you brought that up mm-hmm. because when you are, one thing I could tell say is I don't recommend dating when you are, when Ooh, you are in a damaged yes. position, or so when you're you just are gonna hurt the other person. You yes, love. and not even just that, you're attracting people that are no basically feeding you. off yeah. of your damaged soul. They're they're feeding off of your misery. They they're feeding off of what you're going through. And, you know, th- these people are not, I just, I don't recommend dating when you're, when you're going through your shit. And, all, and if it is a good person that you, that you happen to get, then it's kind of messed up towards that person too. Because now, you know, you can't love somebody else if you don't love yourself at that moment. At that point, you're taking advantage. Yes. Not in a good way. Not in a, yes. this person's good for me, so let me take advantage and let them help me. It's more of this person is good because they're healed and, mm-hmm. and they love themselves and I don't love me so I'm gonna use them for when I feel even more down about yeah. myself and then when I'm like really in the deep end and I feel depression mm-hmm. want to be alone completely then you cut them off yeah and you ghost them for weeks mm-hmm. and then you have the other person sitting there wondering like damn what did I do wrong yes you and, know? It, and that ends up happening because when you go through this manic depression and when you go through depression in general anxiety that ends up happening exactly. and it, it's it's now you just put your put your your problems you know and and the what you're going through onto somebody else mm-hmm. if that makes sense now that person was happy hurt they people, were healed hurt people yes and now now somebody's hurt the way you were hurt and it's just kind of like it's just not fair at the, the end of the day damaging cycle yes you should definitely wait to date yeah until you completely are healed yourself trust me it would be way better like you know you could mess up something with a good person that you know, should it have been good if you would have just waited for the right time? Exactly. The right person will come to you at the right time. Exactly. And not only that, a lot of people, like myself, when I was depressed, I, I dated a lot. And I would always, my relationships would last between two to two to five months. Five mm-hmm. months is overdoing it because sometimes I wouldn't even hit that. <laughs> and then three weeks later, you see me with a new broad. And that's because... I lacked love within myself, and I also searched for somebody to just show me any type of attention, mm-hmm. even if it was for five minutes, and then they'll treat me like complete garbage, mm-hmm. like after that for months and weeks and ghost me and then come back. I will allow that because I didn't allow my, I didn't love myself, mm-hmm. and that just makes it worse for yeah, you, you know. Does. And I just, I don't know, me hopping from people to people, it made me realize like. You're never going to be stable with a person until you love yourself. Yes, exactly. And that's the biggest thing is like, if you think about it, I feel like depressed people when they're ready, well, not ready, but when when they're not so in their heads or when they're tired of being in their heads and they look for another body Mm -hmm. to turn to, Mm -hmm. they're so giving and they put that person on a pedestal Mm -hmm. until they're like, lost in their head again and it's like people yeah, no, seek screw comfort you. when when we're when we're going through you know our depression and our manic episodes we seek comfort in others mm-hmm. and it's because you know we don't want to be alone exactly alone a lot of us thoughts. fear to be alone and it's like okay once you do get over that fear of being alone 
I used to not want to be alone. I used to always have roommates, always I have people moving. That. Now I don't want nobody moving in. <laughs> I don't want you know. I if what you know you could come over when I invite you over. I like my space. I like to be at home alone. Like I love being by myself. Mm-hmm. And it's like once you repair yourself, being alone no longer faces you exactly. at all. And I used to be so desperate. I need a relationship. I need a relationship. I need or a relationship. Person. I remember need, that because yeah. I remember you honestly looking at you now compared to back then. Mm-hmm. You used to snap a lot of photos and like videos of you know, and, and on That's- Instagram on Snapchat. And now it's like you're the only thing you post on Instagram is like inspirational quotes yeah. or you know spiritual quotes or about mm-hmm. your business and it's like you barely see you anymore no. and it, i'm telling you she, i am so glad you brought that up also when i was going through my manic episodes um i had this thing where i posted snapchats and videos and pictures every day all day long i was always snapping and i feel like when you, me doing that was me being insecure mm-hmm it was a huge insecurity. I was being so... Seeking attention. Yeah, I was seeking attention. So when you constantly see somebody posting themselves, don't look at it like, oh, they're conceited. No. Nine times out of ten... It's deeper than it's that. It's way deeper than that. You know, like, people probably thought that about me. Like, wow, she's, she's posted something. Like, my snap oh, had a story every day, mm-hmm. like, nonstop. I was always snapping, Mine always... Too. All the time. Filters. Snapchat filters all the time. And like, then after you post everything, when you're in bed by your, alone in your thoughts, you're like, why the hell did I post all those videos? Oh, and cares? That, oh, that. And not even just that. Oh, God. my Just look at, it, at the views. Oh, yeah. Every second. Who watched me? Who saw this? Yeah. Oh, you know, wanted certain people to see it. See it if they did that. That's just doing way too much. Like, I don't, I don't do that at all anymore. And like she just said, like after I, I, I got out of this and healed myself and had my spiritual awakening, like I, I, it's so much deeper than just wanting people to see what you look like. Mm-hmm. No, I want people to see who I am mm-hmm. deep down inside, in, the sur- in my soul, deep down in my surface, not on the outside. So it's like, you know, now I'm more trying to shine as far as like who, you become. who I become yeah. and my goals and how I want to help others to become their best self. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I want to bring up that a lot of us, um, I want to go over being cursed and having a curse on you or having negative, negative energy. energy attached to you. Yep. Um, a lot of people could confuse that with, you know, like not confuse it, but having that, just like the anxiety, how it stems from something, having something on you could also cause anxiety and depression you know and a lot of us are spiritually attacked and we have no idea Mm -hmm. we have no idea if you're not open to this and understanding and and you know want to know and you're closed-minded i look at that as okay a you know you're victims to people who are open to people who are you know who not everybody is good in this world you never know what somebody is doing behind closed doors okay um if I can explain what a curse or how it feels like when you're cursed, um, you have no motivation. Like the thing, like you'll think about, okay, I, I want to get up and get a job. But there's a voice in your head telling you, no, you can't do it. Mind you, you've never been like that before. Um, I really want, you know, to press that too, because it's like when you remove these energies and it's not about just being cursed you could have a relationship with somebody that you have sex with them and their energy attaches to you Mm -hmm. and it's very hard to get that person's energy off of you a lot of us have our ex's energy that's still attached to us and this is bad energy and we have this great amazing energy within us and it's being covered by energies of people that are not even it's not our energy but it's attached to us um when you're intimate with somebody their energy attaches to you Okay, so if it's a bad energy, guess what? Now you're carrying that around with you. So it's a very important to cleanse your energy, cleanse your soul, cleanse yourself. Um, after cleansing yourself, protect yourself from anything being sent your way. Like I said, you never know what somebody is doing behind closed doors. You never know. Um, so basically, what's helped you out a lot is, is becoming spiritual. Becoming spiritual. That honestly... Um, speaking to my ancestors, um, I manifested my business. I manifested, you know, my life becoming better. I manifested all of this. Okay. I manifested all of this and 
it all just came together like it took a great turn it, for you. it did it did um I was really at the bottom I had no money I had I couldn't pay my rent um I couldn't even eat like mm-hmm. when I opened up my business my online business I had to pay for the website to be published and um I had two hundred dollars and I didn't know how much it was gonna be for the website. I know it was like one fifty, and I didn't know if it was gonna be extra money. So I didn't eat for two days while I made all my candles to take pictures of. Um, my kitchen, the light was broke. Um, I couldn't afford any light bulbs. I sat there with my flashlight on my phone, pouring candles, um, making candles in the dark. Like, and now I see you in a beautiful two bedroom apartment, yeah. and everything's going well for you. You just mm-hmm. moved in. You're getting brand new furniture. You're everything's going well for you. Everything's going. I mean, and I've I, I witnessed all that. Yeah. You know, and I'm honestly, I'm glad to sit here, and not only be your friend and have such a beautiful soul as you, oh. uh, blah, a beautiful soul like you as a friend, oh. but I'm also proud of you for taking that step. Yes, thank I'm you. I'm very very proud of you. Very happy that you were just like, I'm not gonna let depression defeat me. No. Nope. I'm not gonna let this manic defeat me. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna defeat it. Yeah. And I did it so quick. She took. I did it so quick. She pressed that button off cruise control. And she yeah. put her pedal on the on the skirt. gas pedal. <laughs> I and she took control. There's a um, there's a Janae Aiko song, and she says that um, she she basically something about her turning her car, but like she she got back on the right road. Mm-hmm. I feel like I was on the wrong track. Like I was downhill. If you asked me last year, if I ever in my life thought I would be where I was at right now. I I would never think ever. I would I, in my mind I was always going to be have I was always going to have this anxiety. I was always going to have this depression. I was always going to be like this. And that's what was in my mind. I felt like it was never going to end. I felt like this was my life and it wasn't. And it's and that's why I'm, I I am so happy to be able to talk to, you know, about this to you guys because when you're in it you feel like there's no getting out of it. No, nope. you, you know? feel entirely alone. Yeah, and a lot of us, we we turn to drugs. Mm-hmm. We turn to drugs because we can't handle it anymore, and we don't want to feel like that. And even I've turned to drugs, you know? I've went to perks. I've went to things, you know, that I've overcome. And it's... The drugs are just temporary. I want you guys to know that. It's not... Uh, all of it is All of temporary. it. It's not... You know, it's... Be, yes, all of it is temporary, you know, taking the drugs, temporary, trying to fix it, that temporary, it's all temporary. We have control over our own minds. Remember, guys, you are not your thoughts, you are your actions. Yes, you could easily turn your car around and get back on the right road, easily. It's, just, it's all about having, just getting out of that mindset of... We can't do it. Exactly. Because you can. You can. You can. And that's exactly why I made this podcast. Because mm-hmm. And I'm, which I'm I very felt- proud of you for. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I am so proud of Steph for doing this because Steph has always been a motivational speaker. <laughs> always. Like, I would always go to Steph and I would always go to her for her, you know, to give me some words, give me some words of wisdom and, you know, help me with certain things. And she always had the right things to say. She always knew what to say and how to say it. So this is an amazing thing that you're doing. And I really do salute you for this. And you're doing amazing at it. And I know that she deep down wants to help people. That's what she deep down wants to do. That's my main goal here. And that's exactly why I did all this and made the podcast. Because when I was depressed, I, I felt entirely alone. Mm-hmm. You know, I had my mom and dad and, you know, gratefully I had my mom and dad because not too many people could sit here and say that they have their mom and dad to turn to. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have the best relationships, but once I started working on me, our relationship became a lot better. And I started realizing they, they emotionally, they're, they're a great support system. And mm-hmm. that's what you guys got to realize is that you're not alone. And we push people who care about us so much, who check up on us so much, we push them away because we're afraid to understand and accept the fact that we're not alone, that there are people out there that want to help us. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, this is going to be the end of the podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you, Selena, for being a part of this. You're welcome. Thank you for having me, guys. Yes, thank you for sharing your experiences. Um, If you guys have any questions, you're more than welcome to email me at strengtheningwithsteph 
at gmail.com or you can follow me on Instagram, Strengthening with Steph, and DM me there. If you're looking for a more spiritual guide or if you're interested in, you know, getting some spiritual healing, you can go ahead and follow Selena at go ahead and tell her your Instagram. Uh, Light and Love by Lena. Um, and my website is www.lightandlovebylena.com. Awesome, guys. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Good night, guys.